Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today I want to talk about how to maximize the loudness of your Logic projects. You've mixed your track, you're applying mastering processing either to the stereo output or to the whole album, and you just can't seem to get your track to be as loud as your reference tracks. It's like no matter what you try, you just can't seem to do it. You're messing around with your compressor, you're adjusting the adaptive limiter, but still there's a disparity. Now we can't have this conversation without at least acknowledging that there is a huge conversation going on around loudness of audio. Is there such thing as too loud? And the industry in the last couple of years has had a resounding yes, there is such thing as too loud. In fact, broadcast streaming services have applied loudness standards to standardize the loudness of tracks. So if you're listening to a playlist on Spotify or on Apple Music, if one track is much louder than the loudness standard, that track gets turned down. And this is all in the effort to create a good customer experience. Totally makes sense. But where does that leave us, right? When we're mastering our tracks, when we're comparing our tracks against our references, the reference is louder. And you can't help but feel a little uncomfortable, a little unsure. Is my track the best it could be? And the fact of the matter is, tracks are still loud, and our tracks have to compete with those loud tracks. So I came across a very interesting concept of using the multipressor to parallel compress our tracks and then blend the result underneath. It adds an average loudness without necessarily squashing the dynamics of our song. This originally came about from a Gear Sluts thread that I found in 2008. And I've already contacted the original poster. All is well, happy to share. I'll include the link down below to the original thread if you're interested. But I'll walk you through this whole process. First, let's take a listen to my track as it compares to my reference. I'm gonna solo back and forth and we'll just kind of hear what I've done so far. First so what you what you what you need it's almost 3 a.m. no limit outside when they tank it. I'll pull a sword and you sense just with a flick of the wrist get you that giving a miss me and my soul the nerve of the dark bands veer on something it's just first so what you what you tip a fifth for the whiz I uh. smoke a dub in the tub no limit outside when they tank is human so as you can hear I'm in the ballpark, but I'm still not quite there. And I feel like for this style of music, loudness is a key factor. Okay, so what do we do from here? Well, I've already applied processing to my track. In fact, I have a compressor. I'm using just the limiter on the compressor to kind of tuck down some of the kick drum hits that are kind of loud. Then I have a compressor here that's actually compressing two to one. I've adjusted the attack and release to be quite slow. We could try to adjust the compressor to try to squeeze more out of this track. Let's see what we can come up with. First, so what you, what you, what you need? It's almost 3 a.m. No limit outside when the tank is fuming on me. But as we can already hear, the compressor is starting to clamp down a little too hard on my track, and I can hear the effects of the compressor. This is not what we want. So on top of that, I have the fat effects. I'm using just 5% of the soft saturation. Maybe if I add saturation, we can bump up the average volume. First, so what you, what you, what you need? It's almost 3 a.m. No limit outside when the tank is fuming on me. You can fuck my neck. Step judgments, crash course on neglect. Oh. Okay, it's getting louder, but the distortion is becoming less and less transparent and more obvious. Okay, so I have my track in a track stack here, and the final processor in the mix is the adaptive limiter. Maybe we can bump up the gain. Check it out. First, so. What you, what you, what you need? It's almost 3 a.m. No limit outside when the tank is fuming on me. You can fuck my neck. Step judgments, crash course on neglect. Oh, the nerve of the dark bands veer on. Of course, by hitting the adaptive limiter harder, we're causing our track to sound more and more squashed, which again is not the goal. So add volume, not squash it. So instead, let's create a parallel channel. And the setup for this entire thing, if we open the mixer, I've created a send and I'm sending to bus one and bus one is this auxiliary channel here. It's in parallel to my track and I've included the multipressor with this particular setup and preset. And let's just take a listen to the difference now when I introduce the multipressor in parallel as compared to my reference track. First, so what you, what you, what you need? It's almost 3 a.m. No limit out. Hey, I'll pull a sword and you sense. Just with a flick of the wrist. Get you that giving us on neglect. Oh, the nerve of the dark bands veer on something. Okay, closer. I'm just gonna bump this up, maybe 1.5. And let's check it out here. First, so 
Watch ya, watch ya, watch your knee. It's uh. I smoke a dub in the tub, then I will split both hey. my wrists. Human on me, you can fuck my neck. All right, we're way more in the ballpark, and I could probably massage it a little more from here. Candidly, it did take me a while to kind of decide on what settings work best for my track across all these processors, as it should. Mastering is not about smashing tracks, it's about balance. So with this parallel chain setup, let's open the multipressor. Now I've included a link down below to this preset for the multipressor. So we'll walk through the settings, but if you just feel like downloading the preset, loading it up, totally fine. Just check out the link below. The easiest way to load a preset, in my opinion, is just to open the multipressor, click on load in this drop down menu, and you should see the preset in the downloads. We navigate to it, click on it, and then you can hit open, and it'll open within the multipressor. And then I would just hit save as and save it with this name. And then everything is set up and ready to go. Okay, looking at the multipressor, all of the settings are identical. It's like a two to one ratio. The compressor threshold is far down. The peak RMS is set to zero milliseconds, the attack zero milliseconds, the release 350. And the goal is for this thing to clamp down quickly and, you know, really hang on to the signal. And what's really cool about the multipressor is you don't get the same degree of obvious squash as you would with a broadband compressor like the Logic Compressor. It's compressing each frequency range on its own. I mean, let's just take a listen to this parallel channel by itself. It's almost 3 a.m. No limit outside when the tank is fuming on me. You can fuck my neck. So we can hear that it's squashing, but yet it still sounds quite transparent. That's pretty awesome. And then the case is, is just to make sure that both your main track that's not being hit hard with the multipressor and the auxiliary channel that is, are both being sent to the same output. If you don't want to impact your reference tracks because you're comparing against them, that's why I've created a track stack. Both of these are sending through bus 97 to this track stack channel, which I've been able to apply my adaptive limiter. And from there, you can just blend the taste. As you can see, I have this at negative 1.5, so it's actually probably pretty comparable in terms of level. But what it's adding is a lot less peaky energy and way more average energy to the track to enhance loudness. So again, I'll include the links down below for the original thread so you can examine that and a link to the preset if you'd like to download it and just run with it and try it out on your own tracks. One more thing I wanna just point out is in this new era of navigating loudness standards and how your track will be impacted once you send it out into the real world, there's actually an amazing service called Loudness Penalty Analyzer. You can drag and drop your tracks right into this webpage and it will analyze the average loudness of your tracks and then tell you Spotify is either gonna turn up or turn down your track. So you can have your cake and eat it too. You can maximize the loudness using the multipressor and then use something like the loudness penalty analyzer to make sure that you're not over baking your tracks. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and new posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.